Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with no budget reviews. The series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use do it head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR but we do have a lot of fun. Well viewers, I've waited a very, very long time for this moment. Here is a 2005 Rover Streetwise 1.4 GLI. These cars are exceptionally rare now. They weren't made for very long. They were made between July 2003 and April 2005. There were some of these that were completed by uh, the administrators after MG Rover went bankrupt in April 2005. But there aren't an awful lot um, left. I do apologise, it's a bit noisy here. Um, I'm doing this review quite quickly on the way back from a massive filming trip uh, up um, to West Yorkshire. And uh, I've stopped in Sheffield because um, Rob, who is a channel viewer, has offered uh, me this car, which is very kind of him. There are only maybe 100 or so of these actually on the road. It's difficult to get an exact number, but this GLI model, which is one of the run-out models, um, there are apparently only about seven of these actually taxing on the road. The GLI and GSI only came out in February 2005, so they really weren't made for very long. They were made for about two months. The Streetwise actually is a very, very pioneering car. It's kind of the same sort of thing as the um, Volkswagen Polo Mark IV Dune at the time, um, in that we've got just a normal hatchback, sort of Fiesta-sized car, Although when the um, street was had its first life um, in 1995 to 1999 as the Rover 200 R3 shape, then it was sort of marketed more towards the like, sort of Ford Escort, Ford Focus sort of size. But uh, by the time the 25 came out in 1999, and then the Streetwise in uh, 2003 was firmly aimed at the Fiesta market, would have gone straight up against the um, Mark. Six Fiesta at the time, and of course the Mark IV Polo. One really annoying thing about these cars, and this pioneered um, the sort of facelift ZRs and 25s, which were very similar to this, is the fact that you need to use this remote to open the boot. Focus, there we go. Come on, there we go. If you lose the remote on this or a facelift ZR or 25, you've had it, viewers. You've absolutely had it. The boot's about 304 litres, which is actually very big for this size of car for the time. Most was under 300 litres. We'll just move that stuff out of the way there. And we've got a full-size spare in there. Excellent. Put that down. The carpet's never quite sort of full that tidily. But you can split the seats. But the, the sill's very deep. And, uh, you know, the rear seat, if you fold them, they won't exactly full flush but that's really common with these and we've actually even got speakers and these either side which belies this car's origins um, in the mid 1990s it's actually based on an even older car in some ways um, the front structure is, was actually introduced in 1989 as the r8 type rover 200 the 400 version came along in 1990 um, and then in 1995 they basically gave the car a new body and a new rear suspension that's derived from a maestro rear suspension. Now, you might think that a maestro rear suspension will be terrible, but having driven many, many maestros in my life years, I can tell you that maestros handled very well. It was very well regarded at the time. So McPherson struts at the front, and then um, that, uh, I think it's, it's a torsion um, beam or bar type suspension in the back. You can see this car always carried the newer Rover badge um, that was introduced on most models in 2004. The Streetwise got it from 2003. Bizarrely, this car actually has a different dash in it from the earlier 
uh, Streetwise is, it's actually got a very late dash in it. This GLI model is just it's really weird. Um, the wheels on this car, I don't know if they actually are standard or not. They look like they're off an earlier 25, a pre-facelift one. But who knows? Um, there's the MG Rover group uh, plate down there. And these really weird seats. It's very strange the way that this car was marketed very differently from the 25 or the ZR. So it, you had all three variants based on one platform. Uh, the old uh, R3200, all on sale at the same time, uh, from 2003 to 2005. So this car with, with a slightly later dash has the newest style air vents, and it has the newest style switch pack here. The earlier ones actually do have different vents. Bizarrely, a passenger airbag wasn't actually standard on this trim. It was available. Um, so it's an, even some of the R3200s from 95 to 99 it was available but they weren't all fitted at this time I don't think we got set outside airbags the 45s did glove box I'll get the secret dogs out in a second and check that but um, yeah no air conditioning and <laughs> lots of blank switches uh, I imagine one of those will be for front fog lamps uh, one of those will be for air conditioning I can't remember what the other one is for no sunroof in this no air con um, that is a leather steering wheel, and those are the later style stalks that came with the facelifted uh, 25 and ZR as well in 2004. The Streetwise had a unique dull colour as well. On the uh, 2003 onwards, come on autofocus, come on, there we go. On the 2003 onwards um, 25s, even before the facelift, they actually had a uh, different um, dial pack, and so did the Streetwise is about the same time. Uh, these are blue, the 25s would be white, the ZRs are different again. This is, as well as a different centre console, it's got this sort of, uh, you know, actual sort of bits in here, so it's a bit taller than would be on something like a 25. And this is a, a Ford gearbox, it's uh, called the Ford IB5 gearbox, which was introduced to the ZR, ZS, 25, Streetwise, 45 with uh, engines up to 1.6 litre petrols because uh, well um, how do I put this BMW owned the gearbox factory where the gearboxes were made the, especially the R65 gearbox was dated back into 1989 with the R3200 and that um, was a Peugeot derived gearbox and they found that actually going to Ford who were helping them to make the MG X Power SV and um, the MG ZT216 Rover 75 V8 at the time by supplying with muscle engines had a gearbox that they could have for less money so this has a Ford gearbox similar to the uh, Fiesta Mark 6 so yeah it's not the best quality dash it looks sort of alright but for some reason the quality is just not there but to be honest the earlier dashes weren't the best anyway but there's no chance of getting any wood in here. It's all very sort of much more modern. It's very sort of designer 2000s in here. It just reminds me of, a, of another time, really. There are bottle holders in the uh, in the doors. Um, and also it's very strange, but I don't know what you're supposed to put in there. Um, and then that's, uh, well, far bigger, you know, far for that more adequate than you'd imagine for, ha for, ha for having about four or five uh, 2003 era mobile phones. If you've got a Nokia 8310 or something, you've got about four of them in there. Weird sort of cubby just there. Let's have a look in the back, should we viewers as well? Oh, yeah, there's the, there's the, um, <laughs> the clock just up there, just like in the old R8200. Uh, the front structure, of course, is the uh, same as that. Okay, viewers, this isn't going to be very graceful. Okay. Oh. I don't think you could ever get electric rear windows in any of the cars on this platform right terrible filming there i do apologize right just keep this key nice and handy because if you lose one of these petron remotes oh dear you're in trouble right put that on my safe um it's better than i remember um i have adjusted this seat for my driving possession the R3200, when it came out in 1995, was not known for rear legroom. The boot was very competitive, but the legroom was terrible. Um, so 
why they tried to price it up against uh, you know things like I don't know a Nissan Almera or something like that. I don't know, but there we go. Yeah, could do with a sunroof in here, but it's not too bad. Um, certainly, just for the time, the rear space is perfectly adequate. And we've got this blue theme still going on. The blue door pulls, the blue fabric and everything like that. Um, feels okay. Maybe a little bit dated. But actually, when you think about the ZR being one of the best-selling pot hatches of the time, this car could have been actually very successful if it lived a bit longer. I mean, you know, there's so many jacked-up super minis on the market, Fiesta Active and things like that, that have been since. But it really was a bit of a pioneering car, even if it was a project done with a very, very low budget. So here is the famous K-Series engine to use, in this case, developing 84 horsepower standard in this GLI model. They were only available with this particular engine. This car, though, has had the throttle body modified to develop 103 horsepower, which is a lot better. I've never actually ever driven an 84 horsepower um, 25 or um, 200 or anything like that so I couldn't tell you what they're like but I've driven lots of 103 brake horsepower ones and the power output is just about right not to takes about 10 seconds um, yes interesting enough you can see that this is very much based on the pre facelift 25 with the separate headlamps um, four headlamps as opposed to the two on the facelift to 25s, even if they, they would have known when we developed this car that the uh, facelift was coming out soon, for which rubber badge was used on most of the models. You do have to make sure with this that you do the timing belt. It's good to see actually there's a sticker on here which, which says the timing belt's been done. They do weep all from the mechanical the gasket. This one looks pretty clean actually. I don't know if it just had a new head gasket on it, but when you do a head gasket on one of these, please make sure you use a good quality. Um, original spec head gasket kit, um, such as a Lotus Elise spec one or a Victor Rice one. Those are the best to use. And uh, that you get someone who knows what they're doing to actually do this. Um, because there's lots of ones that have been done with the MLS head gaskets, which didn't really solve the issue entirely, unfortunately, in the long run. And people who don't know what they're doing. So just make sure when you're buying this car that, that actually the head gasket's been done properly. Um, budget for anyone to be done properly. Coolant reservoir there for the old R8 200s. In fact the whole front structure is virtually the same so no surprise there. But pretty easy to work on really unless you've got the VVC engine. It wasn't available in the streetwise. That's a bit more difficult but um, standard case areas like this no real problem. Okay there let's go for a little spin shall we? No. Right viewers, time for a little test drive around the streets of Sheffield. Go for a bump, well, that seems okay. So we've got raised suspension in this um, in this car, which is why a lot of the streetwises you see came with fairly large wheels. Apart from the base model streetwise, now those are really, really rare. I think they only came with a 1.4 or 84 horsepower engine and they came with steel wheels. I have only ever seen one of those in my life, um, which is the Pride of Longbridge 2022. But the more normal cars um, in the street wide range you would have seen would be the uh, S and SE models that were the standard kind of specifications for these. Bizarrely, they didn't use the same trim structure as either the ZR or the 25. They were going for whatever they wanted to do that was a bit different. I do apologize, my mount is not particularly good today. I, I've um, lost my main mount, so we're gonna have to go with a really old one that shakes a lot. I do apologize, viewers. So the other engines available were the 1.4K series of 103 horsepower, like this car now has, although it wouldn't have had that rigidly. A 1.6 with 100 and seven horsepower and um, a 1.8 CVT automatic known as the step speed with 115 horsepower there are also some diesels available 
But as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, we are, after all, quite close for Sheffield Clean Air Zone. We don't talk about diesels on this channel. So, this car just feels like a 25, an R3 200, a ZR, it just feels like that, but I can feel we're a little bit higher up, which of course we are, but I don't think we're going to be going on any tracks around the farm where my grandmother used to live near Matlock. I don't think it's that sort of car, unless you've got a, like an MOT failure example, one of these, and you know, you, you're just using that as a farm car. I, I don't think it's uh, really that sort of thing. I think it's more it's designed for where I'm in the, in the city for just driving around and looking a bit like an SUV, which is what a lot of these jacked up cars like the Ford Fiesta Active do these days anyway. Another example would be slightly smaller Kia Picanto X-Line. And the most cynical of all, I think, probably was the Vauxhall Viva Rocks. I don't really know why that even existed, but now everybody wants cars like this. And if, if Rovers still existed, which they don't, they haven't existed for um, 18 years now, they really were onto something with this. And they sort of foresaw what was coming in the future. A car like a Honda HRV, which was introduced a few years before this and, and was sold about the same time, was a car platform, but with a, a sort of new body on it. This was just a, a car that had been raised a bit with some cladding on it. Um, whether or not that's your sort of thing, I, I don't really know. It's up to you. Um, personally, I, I think the standard 25 for me is absolutely fine. If you want the more sporty one, you can go for a ZR. This, I I don't know. It's, it's, it's more kind of like a piece of history more than anything else. And because a lot of the shared componentry is, is with a lot of the models, it's, it's relatively easy to get parts for these. You know, discount Andrew Ever Spares, who very kindly give me some discounted parts for servicing my 45 V6. They're good people to find parts for, though specific trim bits inside here and out on the outside for a street wife might be very, very hard to come by now. So just bear that in mind before you buy one. Also bear in mind rust. We've talked about the engine and the cam belt and things like that. Um, and the Pectron remote. <laughs> the bane of my life, viewers. Oh dear. Lloyd Living Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. So viewers, should you consider a Rover Streetwise with your hard-earned budget of between, say, 500 and a thousand pounds? Well, depending if you can find one of these, they're not exactly common. The other thing is, you might just be better off buying a normal 25. We've had two 25s on the channel, and we've had two ZRs as well. The ZR probably drives a little bit better, it's a bit firmer. Um, the 25s are more plentiful and they're a bit cheaper. But if you want the look of this and you want this kind of piece of pioneering history, it's amazing what MG Rover are able to do with really not a lot of budget and some kind of old fashioned ingredients to make this look as different as um, as it does. So, you know, from that point of view alone, it, it is quite interesting. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this video in the comment below. Thank you again to Rob for um, allowing me to film this car. I've been waiting to review one of these for a really long time, actually. And uh, we shall see you again soon for more inexpensive motoring.